Modern society very well may have been a mistake. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to The Hunger Games. As per usual, before we do the thing, this video is sponsored by our loving mother, Surfshark. Thanks, Mom. So while I wanted to make you guys laugh this week by showing you videos like this. I've thought this for a while, but I've never said it on here, so here we go. I don't think that racists should be allowed to use tanning salons. If you don't like melanin, then you don't get any! No melanin for you. And this. And honestly, maybe even this. So well, the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway. <laughs> I, I, we're going to get a lot done. That is unfortunate. Instead, I want to take a look at the not all men phenomenon, where people effectively blame all men for the actions of a few, which I don't think is super intelligent. Someone had better go and tell our friends over at Feminist Island. We don't call it Feminist Island. We prefer to call it hell. For as long as I've been making content, this topic has repeatedly come up. Each time a woman is harmed in some way and the story gets national or even international attention, we see the same kind of commentary. Talking heads weigh in on the behavior of men. Instead of telling our girls not to walk through parks, maybe we should be telling our boys not to rape them. There are discussions around toxic masculinity and violence. There have been calls, hyperbolic or otherwise, to introduce curfews for men, even one as recently as a few weeks ago in response to the murder of a young woman in London. I would argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6 p.m., which I feel would make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. Politicians attempt to pass legislation thinking it will better protect women or expand their rights, such as in the recent announcement by London Mayor Sadiq Khan to make misogyny a hate crime. And each time these things happen, the response inevitably seems to focus on the behavior of men and boys not only exclusively, but collectively. This logic leaves many people, me included, thinking, Stop that. A response that really doesn't seem to sit too well with our feminist overlords. And uh, having feminist overlords doesn't sit too well with me either. Emotionally, I'm just like, I mean, honestly, Sydney, you could be one of us if you weren't such a bigot. <laughs> now bring me a sandwich, you peasant. But when people point out that decent men are unhappy being associated with everything from female abusers to misogynists and want to distance themselves from these associations, the other side consistently argues that this is men trying to turn the attention back on themselves and our male-centric culture. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I certainly don't want to be associated with man-hating serial killers Eileen Warnos, 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 for the rest of my life simply by virtue of being a woman. No, <laughs> thank you. I had braces. Other arguments include that feminism isn't attacking men in general, but patriarchy. Nobody is claiming that this is the fault of all men, but there are a few bad eggs out in society that are enough to make women feel uncomfortable most of the time. They also argue that saying not all men centers men as the victim instead when women are literally begging in the streets not to be raped and killed. Maybe in Iran. Just kidding. Prison if you protest. And inevitably, that leads us to these kind of videos. All these women went to social media, started talking about their own experiences, and a bunch of men saw these tweets and said, how can we make this about us? And that's how the hashtag not all men started trending. It's effectively a hashtag that says, hey, women, I see all the problems you're facing, but I just wanna make it clear, it's not my fault. Okay, the last time the not all men hashtag was trending was during the Me Too movement. Again, effectively it's taking Shaggy's defense of, wasn't me. And can I just say, if your first response to something like this is, yo, this is not my fault, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, it probably is. A normal person who was well-adjusted, if they met someone who went through trauma, they would probably say, I'm so sorry that happened to you, how can I help? Not, 
but I'm okay, right? Yes, we realize that 100% of men are not bad people. We never said they were. So I don't know why this hashtag has a trend trying to dispute something that was never a thing. Yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the majority of men aren't trying to make these issues about themselves. In fact, if anything, they're just responding to the collective blame and shame and vitriol that you say doesn't exist. And before we look at some examples of that, which will probably make you wanna cry, let's hear from today's sponsor, Surfshark. So you two have been fighting a lot. Uh, why do you think that is? Sydney? We just can't seem to agree on anything when it comes to the Surfshark ads. I wanna tell people about its benefits and she wants to... Roll around in the blood of my enemies. Roll around in the blood of your enemies. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Sydney, what would you rather be doing instead? I don't know, talk about how Surfshark lets people access blocked websites and applications, bypass country restrictions, hides their IP address, all of which, mind you, seems pretty important right now considering the internet censorship climate that we have. And Sydney, you don't like that idea? I do, whatever, but it's boring. She wants to talk about how you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you like. And when you click the link in the description and use code SYDNEY, you get 83% off and three extra months free. Yeah, see? These things matter. I just want to fight FBI agents with my katana. That's a spatula. That is a spatula. You guys never let me have any fun. We know what you mean by not all men, because on a basic level, we agree with you. Aww, that's a really nice sentiment that I wasn't expecting while I was scraping the bottom of the barrel to get your opinions. Aww. But the socialization of men is such that even a good man, a supportive man, a respectful man, a trusted man, has within him the potential for violence and harm, because these behaviors are normalized through patriarchy. Oh. Never mind then. Whether you like it or not, if you are a man who has grown up in the United States or anywhere in Western culture, you have picked up some aspect of toxic masculinity. This doesn't mean you are a rapist, but it probably means you have been taught to objectify or underestimate women at some point. I'm too old for this. I'm too tall and too old for this. That is a fact. Not all men are rapists. Not all men sexually assault women. Not all men commit gender-based violence, but all men benefit from these violent actions and a global system of patriarchy. Ah yes, this rhetoric really fills me with confidence. So you see, when people like Lily and other feminists tell us that they're not blaming all men, uh, they kind of are. Because by saying that men have an intrinsic, built-in drive towards violence and harm, you're kind of lumping them all together under the same toxic, violent umbrella. Because, you see, it's not that you just want bad men to be called out. It's that you want all men to be called out and somehow rid them of their toxic masculinity and patriarchal attachments. An interesting side note here, in their 2001 book, Spreading Misandry, The Teaching of Contempt for Men in popular culture, writers Paul Nathanson and Catherine Young describe how men can be considered honorary women under particular circumstances, likely when they reject the aforementioned toxic masculinity and what have you, and this protects them from accusations of sexism. Interesting. That kind of sounds like male feminists. Yeah, they kind of are like honorary women, aren't they? Explains why I'm not attracted to a single one of them. In the last little while, teenage boys as young as 12 at a school in Victoria, Australia, were forced to stand up and apologize to their female classmates for the offensive behavior of their gender. I, for one, would like an apology for why you guys can't seem to put lids back on jars. In commenting, the school said that as part of this discussion, boys were asked to stand as a symbolic gesture of apology for the behaviors of their gender that have hurt or offended girls and women. Danielle Shepherd, her son's in year seven, was at the assembly. Danielle, good morning. Good morning, Neil. Was he required to stand? Uh, yes, he was. What did he think of it? Um, he was confused. Uh, he said that they had to watch a video, and once they watched the video, they were all asked to stand um, in solidarity to apologise to the female gender um, on behalf of their gender, um, which... He wasn't sure why 100 percent it you know it wasn't a very thought out process, I don't think, by the school in general. was he was um, he embarrassed? 
Not so much embarrassed, just highly confused and then upset. Um, he now has this misconception that all boys are now looked at as predators, um, even though they're not. So besides being asinine, this type of thing sets women up as the universal victim and men as the universal perpetrator. And you guys know how much I hate that. Why are we having young men and boys apologize for behavior they've probably never even exhibited? And better yet, why are they shouldering the actions of others? Personally, this school didn't go far enough. Those girls deserve reparations. For what? For being women. Pay me for being a woman. My life is so much more expensive and complicated. What about this is so confusing to you? Another really interesting part about all of this too is that we generally view women as better people than men, which is something that I've talked about before on this channel. One pair of researchers called this the women are wonderful effect. One study I found showed that women's automatic in-group bias is remarkably stronger than men's. It also concluded that participants showed pro-female bias to an extent that they automatically favor their mothers over fathers or associated male gender with violence. Which I think is really interesting, because although we're really mean to one another, apparently women still preference each other. So there's that. I won't lie, this definitely feels like a glitch in the matrix. Now, when a woman is harmed, there is no question to me that the conversation at that point is not about men. It becomes about men, however, when the conversation strays from fixing the problem of women's safety and turns into vilifying men for their behavior. That isn't men making themselves the center of the conversation. That's men defending themselves against vitriol and accusations of violence that have nothing to do with the majority of them. Part of my frustration is that when we have these conversations, we exclusively focus on the experiences of women, which is honestly completely fine. I have no problem talking about either sex's issues in isolation. But only ever talking about women, which we mostly do, means a few things. I mean, for starters, it incorrectly paints women as the most victimized sex. It discredits and ignores male victims and male experiences, and socially, it's just not reflective of reality. And I've made countless videos about these topics, from child custody battles, to domestic violence, to violence at the hands of strangers, sexual assault, and so on. And while men are more likely to perpetrate crime, they're also considerably more likely to be the victims of it as well, especially when it comes to random attacks. Some data suggests that they're equally as likely to be victims of domestic violence, and that women instigate many violent physical situations in the home. Many studies point to the fact that general female aggressiveness is on the rise, or maybe we're just paying more attention to it. Who knows? And honestly, we've all but taught women that men walk around effectively with a neon sign that says, all sex welcome, that they can't even be victims of sexual assault or rape. So step right up, ladies, and do whatever you please. If we're being completely honest with ourselves, we don't actually think about sexual assault and harassment towards men in the same way that we think about it towards women. Grab a guy's butt, he'll probably like it. Grab a woman's butt, that's assault. Grab my butt, and I'll have my ultra egos push you down a flight of stairs. I don't like to get my hands dirty. Well, you got one thing right today, bootlicker. I'm still waiting on my sandwich. My point is that this one-dimensional myopic view of the sexes keeps us in this perpetual female victim, male perpetrator loop. Society wants to have this conversation about female safety and violence against women. And believe me, nobody is more interested in that conversation than me. Because as many of you know, I can relate. I've had some pretty crappy things happen, and I'm also reminded of just how small and weak I am anytime I play fight with my male friends or my older brother. There's no better reminder of the difference between the sexes until one of your male friends or brother has you in a headlock and is trying to force you into a swimming pool. And honestly, nobody is more invested in the safety of women than men themselves, who have wives and daughters and sisters and moms. Some of you might remember a shooting at a movie theater in Colorado back in 20. During that shooting, three men died while using their bodies to shield their girlfriends from the gunfire. Relationship therapist Barton Goldsmith said that for certain men, the idea of putting themselves between a bullet and someone they love isn't even something they think about. Men are hardwired to protect their families and clan, and those who did it in caveman times had bigger families that survived and passed on that trait. So there you go. 
Cavemen. You didn't know what else to say here, did you? Nope, not a clue. Now, I can't speak for men, but I can speak for myself as a woman, and I can absolutely relate to feeling unsafe. When other women talk about not wanting to walk alone at night, or feeling unsafe, or always being on high alert, I can completely relate to that feeling. And I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's something I don't wanna change. I do, of course I do. But we live in a society and regrettably, we are the fairer sex. And something I've said before, but definitely bears repeating is how bizarre it is to me that in countries where feminism has a stranglehold, like Australia, the UK, Canada, and so on, Women in these countries are completely disarmed. Where you can't carry a firearm, obviously, but even other things like mace or pepper spray or a taser. Yeah, consider that one while I go and buy four billion shooty sticks and then turn my body into a weapon. Thank you, Texas. In fact, in Australia, where we are often exposed to stories about female abuse, in 2019, a motion to allow Australian women to arm themselves with tasers, pepper spray, and mace against would-be rapists and murderers was comprehensively voted down. Not just by the men, no, 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 but by every single female senator who voted. It's always enjoyable when people who are protected by security guards get to tell me how I can protect my myself out in public. Hmm. Politicians, I hate all of you. Go away. In response to this particular vote, one female politician said that the last thing that women in Australia need now is another man in power telling us that we are responsible for violence against us. She said that he was putting the onus on women to go to extreme lengths to combat violence rather than addressing men's crimes. Why are you always lying? So men are bad and have an innate inbuilt sense of violence and you want to leave your safety in the hands of other people Gotcha. Now ladies, I don't know about the rest of you, but I am not interested in walking around expecting other people to do the right thing because that leaves you vulnerable and I don't wanna be vulnerable. The UK has also prohibited people carrying pepper spray and the like for protection purposes. And they'd rather suggest curfews for men. Top notch. In fact, in the UK, you can't spray someone with a noxious chemical to get them away from you, but you can get self-defense spray that does not contain any nasty substances and doesn't cause injury or harm to others, but rather marks an attacker with a visible or invisible dye that takes at least seven days to come off. This is some clown world bullshit. So rather than letting us defend ourselves, we then turn our attention to the actions of men. I will always have a problem with collectively blaming one sex or the other. It's a blanket response to usually very nuanced issues and I don't think it remotely moves the needle. The fact that feminists and leftists also love to tell us not to collectively blame other groups of people is yet another part of this conversation that gives me an absolute headache, but I won't get into on this particular occasion and you guys can just deal with this summary. I honestly think people often forget that I do care about the safety of women and that safety directly concerns me because I am in fact a woman, but I don't believe that alienating half the population is the right course of action to take to get there. Anti-male rhetoric is just as bad and just as unhelpful as anti-female rhetoric. I also wanna note here, cause I think this is important, there are cultures out there that believe that women are half the value of a man, that women are second class citizens and actually don't respect women in the same way that we do in the West. But I don't think that these attitudes are representative of or held by too many Western men. My point here is that it's really easy to become very narrow-minded when it comes to issues like this. It's a lot easier to blame all men and place the emphasis and responsibility on their actions than reconcile that actually dealing with this is going to be a lot more difficult than anyone could ever imagine. I certainly don't have the solution to women's safety although owning firearms and mace might be a good step in the right direction. But I do know that greater division and blaming men collectively is just not the answer here. Now, before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder that you can download Surfshark VPN using the link in the description. When you do, you'll receive 83% off and three extra months free. 
Now I open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Is this issue actually a man problem? Is this a woman problem? What are some of your suggestions for furthering and bettering women's safety? Are there things that men can be doing to help us or is it exclusively a female issue? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you wanna leave a comment for free to do so, just be respectful about it. And I will see you guys next time.